All right, what are we going to talk about today? today? This is 2017. This is the year of peopling, pursuing everyone openly, passionately, lovingly, and effectively. And that should actually, that's been our mission for 2017, but I think that should be the church's mission always. Right. Now, in order to do that, there are certain things that we have to grab a hold of, some things that we have to, has to be just a part of who we are. And one of them is this, joy. What is it? I tried to define it. What is joy? You know, there's, there's a scripture that says that the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So I'm trying to do a, an equation, trying to suck out joy and see what it actually equals. You know, that a, squared, a squared plus B squared plus C squared, you know that? So you can, you can isolate whichever very, it wasn't working that way. What is joy? What is joy? Jesus had joy. Actually, Jesus is joy. So today, that's going to be our job. It's just to try to walk our way through some scriptures and determine not only what it is, but how to maintain it. Because if you watch the news these days, your joy will run away from you like a, <laughs> like a cockroach when you turn the lights on. Not it. <laughs> okay, not a cockroach. A hamster, are you? <laughs> so we're going to start in Hebrew. So, so we're going to just try to build a foundation of what is joy? How do we maintain it? How do we keep it? How do we walk in it? All right? Therefore, we're starting Hebrews 12, and whenever we see therefore, we need to go back and see what is therefore, therefore. Right? So I'm going to read this verse. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that which easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. But what is therefore, therefore? We're going to go a couple of verses back into chapter 11. What is chapter 11? The Hall of Fame of Faith. Hall of Fame of Faith, that's right. Verse 39 says, And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. All of these, who are all of these? Now, I didn't want to go all the way back to chapter 1 because then we'd be here till 2 o'clock before we got into the lesson. So what we're going to do is just look briefly at them. All these being Abel. Abel had a, you can do the next slide, had a more excellent sacrifice. Enoch was taken. He had a good testimony. Noah became the heir of righteousness through faith. Abraham, I love Abraham. Abraham trusted and believed, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Sarah, Sarah judged him to be faithful. Moses, by faith, left Egypt and did great miracles. And the cool thing is, we're only looking at the end for them. Because in the beginning, they weren't all monsters of faith. <laughs> in the beginning, they were just like us. But through perseverance, they got recorded in the Hall of Fame of Faith. So that it says, and all these have obtained a good testimony through faith. They did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. That they should not be made perfect apart from us. Provided something better for us. They didn't obtain the promise. Do we have a better covenant with better promises? We do have a better covenant with better promises. So chapter 12 starts, therefore. Because we have a better covenant with better promises. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto who? Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher. The author. What does that mean? Jesus is the word. Jesus wrote the book on faith. So not only did he, he set everything in motion so that we could walk the same path out in faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. So not only was he author and finisher, but he's the example as well. Right? He's the example. What does that mean? If he did it, we should be able to do it. Right? 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy that was set before him. For the joy. All right. What was set before Jesus? Can you show me the next one? So joy. Show me a picture of joy. Is that joy? Oh, dear. That looks like a man beaten to within an inch of his life. Is that joy? Okay, what about the next one? <gasps> no, I'm sorry. I don't care what you tell me. That ain't joy to me. So then what is joy? He endured that for joy. Joy is such a precious commodity in heaven that is what was set before Jesus to empower him to endure that. It's such a precious commodity. Joy. 12.2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, you can show the next one, who for the joy sat down, for the joy set before him, then he sat down. The joy, he could joy be related to us sitting down? For the joy that was set before him, then he sat down. Let me ask you something. How familiar was Jesus with Scripture? That ain't a trick question. How Jesus, how, how familiar was he with the Torah? How familiar was he with, with the book of Psalms? How familiar with, was he with the book of Ezekiel? How familiar was he with the book of Daniel? He was the he, <laughs> all right, I can't fool you guys. Intimately familiar. Intimately familiar. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God. He was familiar with Scripture. In Hebrews, uh, in the first chapter, we learn this. This is when the Lord actually raised Jesus from the dead. This gives you that, that account of what he said when he raised Jesus from the dead. He said this, but to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Okay? Well, pastor, this is in Hebrew, so this was written after Jesus went to the cross. You're absolutely right. Go to Psalms. I'm sure Jesus was familiar with this. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. There is joy in being seated with the Father. Regardless as to what you're facing, regardless as to what's going on, there is Amen. joy being seated with the Father. I, I'm sorry. When you have that joy, you can endure anything. When you have that joy, it makes it easy to minister to someone in the midst of your junk. Joy is such a valuable commodity. It will, it will make you sacrifice yourself. So, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. I know Jesus was familiar with this. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemy. And verse 3, your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. What is the day of his power? Okay, he upholds everything by the power of his word. I'm sorry, by the word of his power, you're right. I, I missed it. By the word of his power. By the word which is his power. He upholds everything by the word. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. In beauty and holiness, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. Jesus was familiar with this scripture. He knew what was going to happen to him, but this scripture gave him joy. I promise I'm going to tie this in to you. Because this is all about joy. As you can see there, it says joy. Jesus was being questioned just before going to the cross. Right? In Mark 14, the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What does these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing again, and the high priest asked him, saying, Are you the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am, 
and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. You will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds. It hadn't happened yet, but he was fully assured. Joy is knowing who you are, who he is, and that he will never fail. That's joy. Joy has nothing to do with your, joy isn't happiness. Happiness is what's happening. Joy is knowing him. How do we know him? We know him through his word. And the more we know him through his word, the more he can actually talk to us. You remember that, that diagram we have of spirit, soul, and body. Well, he's in your spirit. And the more we can get strengthen that spirit-soul connection, the more he's able to talk to us. And he can speak to you in the midst of trouble and give you such a peace that it surpasses understanding. People will look at you and go, are you insane? Do you know what's going on in your life? Absolutely. But I know who's going on in my life. I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Now, in Acts, when Jesus was taken up, it says he was taken up, how? In a cloud. I fully believe Jesus was also familiar with this passage in Daniel. Daniel said, I was watching in the night vision, and behold... One, like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed." Jesus says, you're going to see the Son of Man coming in power, the clouds of heaven. I know that he had read that in Daniel. Why is that so important? Jesus constantly fed himself on the word. We have to constantly feed ourselves on the word. Amen. What would have happened had Jesus not fed himself on the word? Well, this would have happened. Peter took out a sword, cut off his ear. He said, Peter, put your sword away. Don't you know I can call to my father right now? He'll send more than 12 legions of angels, and they'll come up here and tear this planet up. But had he not fed himself on the word and was fully assured, he could have just said, you know what? They ain't worth it. They ain't worth it. I am not going through that. I, 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 no. And you and I would have had it. This planet would have had it. But because the Lord, it's funny to think that the Lord himself would feed himself on the word. But he was the model. Right? He's the model. I'm sorry, there's so many great men of women out there. From Wigglesworth to Copeland to, I mean, you just name them. But they're not the model. Jesus is the model. Jesus knew scripture. And he was able to apply it to his life to keep him focused on the path before him. <coughs> That's all we're to do in this life. We focus on the word. Then to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom. And all the peoples and nations language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. That's joy set before him. Amen. Because of the joy set before him, he was able to endure the cross. Amen. All right. Hmm. Jesus said, you'll know the truth. And the truth that you know will set you free. Right? You'll know the truth. The truth that you know will set you free. Let me show you something that's not the truth. It may be accurate, but it ain't the truth. Uh, you may have to skip one and go to the... 
On the left is North Korea's flag. Thousandfold revenge against the United States in response to the latest round of international sanctions over its nuclear program. And then our president says they will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. If you focus on that, it'll steal your joy. I'm not saying this is not real, but it's not the truth. This is why we pray for the president. <laughs> because what is your response to that? How do you how do you how do you how do you resolve this in your own mind when you see this? What do you say to your kids? There are so often that we see Jesus explaining something in scripture. And he explains it for the moment, but it's also prophetic. When he came to Lazarus' grave, he says, your brother will rise again. She goes, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. You know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, one believed in resurrection, one did not. So she took it to a, a theological. And she said, yeah, th th that's true, but no, I mean today. I mean, I am the resurrection. I'm addressing the now. That is true. I am the resurrection, but I'm addressing the now. Okay? Jesus said this, Mark 13, 7, but when you hear wars, rumors of wars, don't be troubled. Do not be troubled, for such things must come to pass. The end is not yet. The end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines and troubles and these are the beginning of sorrows. But watch out for yourselves for they will deliver you up to councils. You will be beaten in the synagogues. And I, again, the disciples were. They were beaten in synagogues. Okay? You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. But when they arrest you, and deliver you up. Do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak. For it is not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit who speaks. And I think that is such an important verse. Can you go to the next slide? 1311b. Do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak. For it is not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit speaks. And I believe that this is applicable to more than just the disciples, to more than just the apostles, to more than just when someone is challenging your faith. Challenge, why do you believe that? Why do you? I believe when you look at the news and you see these two nations going at it, these two leaders going at it, I think the next slide should be one of the things we do most often. Father, what do I speak in this moment? Father, what do I speak in this moment? Why? Did you know that the Targum calls you a speaking spirit? And Yahweh breathed into Adam the breath of life, and Adam became a speaking <coughs> spirit. Why is that so important? Because Anything that challenges you, anything that comes against you, must be addressed verbally because therein lies the source of your power. You must speak it. I, I, I get it. There, you know, there are monks who take vows of silence. Why? They don't want anything corrupt to come out of their mouth. But if you take a vow of silence, then nothing good can come out either. Right? Father, what do I speak about this situation? There are scriptures where he said, you know, I will bless the works of your hands. I don't care if you just messed up. If it was an honest mistake, Father, I'm sorry, I just messed up. You'll bless the work of me. And then you leave it alone. Just leave it alone. In faith. 
it's time for us to start believing what we've been reading. Amen. It's time for not only believing, but putting it into practice. I can't tell you the number of times I just, I, I, I love this example because even, so Cutie did this again, uh, of assurance, I'm assured that your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets, seeing that you can reveal this secret to me. Whenever I lose something, I go to the Bible, I read that, I say, okay, Father, I need to know where it is, and I just start walking. And so Cutie just did it again, and she said before she, she could get it out of her mouth, she knows she had just looked over there, but she found it, right? That's just putting your faith in action. Okay? The word says that you will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. There's, if there's ever a pain in your body, you qualify. <laughs> you qualify for the, the hand layer and the hand lay ye, whatever. Right? You, you, you qualify for the giver and the receiver. Lay hands on yourself. Let's put our faith in motion. Let's speak to our finances. Let's speak to our job. Let's speak to our car. And nothing bad either. Let no corrupt communication come forth out of your mouth. But only, Father, what do I speak in this moment? That should be a constant thought on our mind. What do we speak in this moment? Because it is the church. It is so often that People say that church is kind of peripheral to society, but that's not. No. The church is the center. Who did he leave in charge? He left the church in charge. He left you in charge. He left me in charge. Well, you can say, no, he left the disciples in charge. Okay. You know, there's a couple of disciples that they call the sons of thunder. I wonder why. Peter the Rock. Want to cut somebody's head off. They had problems too, but they also accepted the Holy Spirit Amen. and walked with him. It, 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 the scripture says that the Lord was working with them and confirming the word preached with signs following. The word them in that scripture is in italics because it was added. The Lord was actually working with the word they preached. Why? Because it's his word. And when you preach it, you don't have to have a congregation of a hundred. You can have a congregation of one. Me. You are your first congregant. Practice on yourself or your wife or your husband. But practice with this. Father, what do I speak in this moment? Is he a real person to you? Yes. He is? Yes. Then ask him. Talk to him. If he's not a real person to you, if he's just some object of theology, theology, the study about God. No. He doesn't want us to study about him. He wants us to know him. That's right. Amen. To know him. And isn't it funny that in knowing him comes joy and peace? In knowing him. Spend time with him. Just spend time with him. Believe me, there's nothing you're going to show him about yourself that he doesn't already know. Right? He created this body that you inhabit. He knows more about that body than you do. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Talk to him. Why? This is... Our father wants intimacy with us. Because intimacy produces peace. Peace produces joy. Hallelujah. When you know the Father, that's peace. The Father wants you to be in peace at all times. No matter what's going on, 
which means he doesn't want you locked into the moment. There are moments happening all, all the time. He just doesn't want you locked into what just happened in that moment. I think that's why Jesus says for the joy before him, because he wasn't locked into the moment. He wasn't locked into being beaten. He wasn't locked into having his beard ripped out of his face. He wasn't locked into being slapped. He wasn't locked into any of that because he saw himself seated at the right hand of the Father. Google says, if you look it up, it says that since humanity has been on the planet, it's probably been 114 billion people or so on the planet. His joy is that because he did what he did, that 114 people don't have to be sent away, Amen. away from his presence. They have the opportunity to say yes. Because he's not locked in the moment. You and I, as the church of Jesus Christ, are not locked into the moment. Amen. We are not in any way locked into the moment. Life is yours. Death is yours. This is part of your inheritance. Life is yours. Death is yours. Things present, things to come. All things are yours. You are Christ and Christ is God's. Amen. What about things in the past? They belong to him. We experience moments, and they keep coming, and Lord, do they keep coming. But you can't be locked into them. And it is only through faith Hebrews 11, that hall of fame of faith. But all of those died without having received the promise. The promise that we now inhabit and who inhabits us. This is eternal life, that they might know you. That's what the whole purpose of this this 90 minutes is about is we want you to experience peace and joy through knowing him peace and joy through knowing him peace and joy so no I couldn't find a, de a, a definition of joy because there is no worldly definition for what it is. No worldly definition whatsoever. The world doesn't understand what it is to know the creator of the universe, have him live on the inside of you, and then in the middle of something that would drive most people insane, you can say, thank you, Jesus. Not for the situation itself, but because you've already made a way. Because you already made a way. Father, what do I speak in this moment? Last week, what did we say? We said, shut up, devil. Now, after we say, shut up, devil, what scripture do we go to? It depends on what you're going through. But I am 100% convinced and assured that our model, Jesus, was well-versed in the scriptures and knew exactly what to say and when to say it. That is why he could sleep in the middle of a storm. Because his internal reality, his internal reality affected the external reality. Not only for him, but for the 12 people in the boat. He knew what the word said. So what does the word say about you? I say read the book of Ephesians. It'll tell you. Amen. He set you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right. Far above far what? Far. Everything. Yes. You can name them if you want to, but far above everything. What does the scripture say about you? The scripture says that my God will supply 
half of what you need. We'll give you what you need if you beg and cry and plead and lay on the floor kicking and screaming. No. All my need. According to whose riches? Donald Trump's? According to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. What does the scripture say about you? That I am healed by the stripes Jesus received. I am healed. Father, what do I say in this moment? I think we would be better than taking a vow of silence is taking only a, a vow of only blessing. Yes. <laughs> just, just, speaking, just speaking blessings. <laughs> Why? Because then the atmosphere around you, that is, that, I'm, you know, I, I, I may sound like a, a flower child maybe, because I, I, I love, isn't that like from the 60s, is that a flower child? Okay. So I don't know exactly what they were, it's just, it's about atmosphere. The atmosphere around me. Okay, so after this, maybe somebody can tell me what a flower child was. I don't know. What it, but it's the, it was the 70s? Okay. I was born in 69, so I should know it. I mean, I was there. You were a baby. But it's all about the atmosphere around me. I want the atmosphere of heaven all around me. Whose job is it to bring the atmosphere of heaven here? It's us. It's your job. It's my job. Jesus' job was to make a way for me to get to heaven. Then he gave me the keys and said, you bring heaven to the earth. Whatever is legal in heaven, you make it legal here. How? By decree. Whatever is illegal in heaven, you make it legal down here. How? By decree. You break the agreement with the spiritual forces. You establish my kingdom on the earth. And he didn't say it was going to be easy. But he said you'd be equipped to do it. And there is joy in the fulfillment of your destiny. There is joy in walking in the fullness of what you are and who you are. There was joy for Jesus in being 100% committed to walking out the plan and purposes of the Father for him. And not only that, he was empowered to do so. There is joy for you to do the same thing. Jesus showed us exactly what a man or a woman who had no sin, anointed by the Holy Spirit, was to do. Well, if you've accepted Christ, which as I look around here, I think everyone has. If you've accepted Christ, he took care of the sin issue. That didn't mean you don't sin or that you, no. But he took care of the sin issue. He said, no, give me those. I'll take them. And then he took them to hell and deposited them in the bank of hell and left them there. Then he came back to give you the spirit. So now, you and I should be able to do exactly what he did. Father, what do I speak in the moment? And let me let you in on a little secret. Not only will he tell you what to speak, he'll also tell you what to do. Yes. Just do it. And you will have no idea until after you've done it just how you've affected someone. Something so little, so, something so insignificant can mean the world to someone. I know each one of us has had that happen to them. I know it's happened to me. Something so insignificant as someone grabbed me one day saying, Jesus loves you and so do I. Uh, yeah, that brother. <laughs> a seemingly insignificant encounter, which has had 20 years of repercussions.
Father, what do I speak in this moment? I don't care what happens at work. I don't care what happens at home. I don't care what happens on television. Don't speak other than to tell the devil to shut up until you get instructions. The devil has no authority. All authority was given to Jesus. After all, there's none. So Jesus has all authority. He gave us the same authority. Don't let the devil steal your authority and use it against you, against your family, against your car, against your job, against your RV. No. We only speak blessings. Father, what do I speak in this moment? I can tell you, I, I honestly need to say that he's never told me to curse anybody. No. And I don't believe he's going to tell us to curse anyone. You speak the end result that we want, which is always biblical, which is always blessing, which is always goodness, which is, all, which is always him. We're coming to a time, and I wish I had a clearer picture of it, but something monumental is about to happen for the body of Christ. Whether this is the second outpouring, or I don't know what it is, but it is about to happen. And he needs people who are locked and loaded up here to speak the blessing. Speak the blessing. Speak the blessing. When he said light be, there was no light. He knew what he wanted. He spoke what he wanted. He got what he wanted. But Jesus said, peace be still to the storm. There was no peace and it was not still, but he spoke what he wanted. He got what he wanted. Thank God he didn't wake up and say, oh, tsh, this wind is howling. It had kept on howling. <laughs> Bless your bank accounts. Log into your bank accounts today and speak a word of blessing over them. Look at your medical records. Speak a word of blessing over them. Speak a word of blessing over your house, over your spouse, over your children. And you may not want to. <laughs> no, I know you want to. <coughs> Over your parents? Speak blessing. Do you believe, as I do, that that would make our Father happy? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is all he wants. He wants a company of people who look, act, talk just like Jesus. Not look, act, and talk like your favorite televangelist. Look, act, talk, think like Jesus. Because there's a solution to every problem. There's a blessing to overcome every curse. But it's up to the church to connect to heaven and get the answer. And we're the only ones who can do it. The only ones who can do it. Amen? Because if you're pulling a blessing from somewhere else, it ain't a blessing from heaven. I don't care how good it may look. There's a <coughs> curse attached to it. So, if the, I mean, here, this would be a huge test. If, if Satan showed up with a satchel full of, full of money, $100 million, and gave it to you, would you take it? I know that'd be hard to turn down, wouldn't it? But it came from the devil. You've got to turn it away. Because you might receive $100 million and lose $500 million. 
<laughs> and an arm and a leg. Okay? We are the church of Christ. We are designed to empower, to bless, and speak his word. That's all we have to do. Amen? Father, what do I do? What do I speak in this moment? Amen.